Have you got gamer muscle? You have now, because you're here. Welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be talking about virtual reality. And more specifically, with the recent price drops of the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, whether or not now is the right time to jump into VR, especially for those of you that were maybe sat on the fence, a little bit undecided, and are not necessarily that jumpy to get into the whole VR bandwagon. Now, we're going to be really honest with this video and cover the positives and negatives of VR and uh, tell it like it is. But before that, you'll notice we are playing Project Cars 2 with the back mono at Cadwell Park. Why? Well, Project Cars 2, in my opinion, is 30 times better in VR than it is in 2D. In fact, every driving simulator is 30 times better in VR than it is 2D, and I find it really hard to go back to playing driving simulators in 2D having played them in VR. Unfortunately, VR is now pretty established in that any new driving simulator that comes out from this year onwards is almost certain to have VR support. And this kind of brings us up with one of the first pitfalls of VR that's diminishing as time goes by, and that is not every game has solid VR support, and it's only until recently that there's actually been a good collection and mix of really tight solid VR games and games with VR support and really it's only since the recent prize drop of the main headsets and the fact that more games now support VR that I would really recommend virtual reality to someone that's not fully committed to just VR games or you know someone that really enjoys exploring new technology I genuinely feel that we're now at a point where if you go and pick up a virtual reality headset you'll actually get something that's very versatile and offers a lot of value for money. Even more so if you have a weird obsession with simulated race cars. This does come with a warning though, you do still need a relatively fast computer. And in the case of uh, most driving simulators and flight simulators and non-designed for VR games, at a bare minimum, I would recommend a more recent i5 processor with at least something equivalent to an NVIDIA 1070 graphics card. Of course, if you're a hardcore gamer, you've probably already got that system, so it's not that much of a stretch, but it's definitely worth keeping in mind if you do have a lower end system, and that might put virtual reality out of your reach until graphics cards, which are really inflated in price at the moment, get a little bit cheaper. Another brutal dose of honesty for those of you looking to get into VR, it's really worthwhile realising that it's a first generation device. So we're on our first generation devices with the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. The result of this is that they're not perfect, though they are actually pretty polished for first gen devices, but you have things in them that are really annoying. For example, the resolution, especially for driving and flight simulators, will annoy a lot of people. If you play a lot of VR and you get used to it, you can look past it and it sort of grates on you less, I find. But some people can't get over that and it's just a simple fact. It's going to feel as if you're a granddad driving a race car until we get maybe to second or even third generation of VR headsets. Another big downside for lots of people with virtual reality, especially with driving simulators and even more so with flight simulators, is that if you suffer from motion sickness, if anything is going to trigger it, it's going to be using a VR headset with a driving or flight simulator. Because you're moving in the game and it really does feel like you're sat in a car and you're not moving in reality. It's, it's the ultimate combination for motion sickness. I would say though, for me, as someone that's really experienced with driving simulators, though the driving might not show that, but someone that's put a lot of time in driving simulators and is using a force feedback wheel and uh, pedals, I find that because driving simulators are repetitive and you have a very defined and communicated set of, of reactions to what you're doing, that you get used to it really quickly. And I found myself accommodating to driving simulators and not feeling motion sick from them very fast. I'd say probably within about a week or so of playing them. The first time I played in it, if you go back to some of my earlier videos where I'm driving lift for speed with the Formula car in that, I could honestly feel in my stomach when I go through a bump in the game, my, my body or my brain was obviously telling my body that this is happening and it was so real that you would feel it when it wasn't actually happening. But unfortunately that does go away, or fortunately for people that don't want to vomit. 
Uh, it depends what you're after and it depends how, how immersive you want your experience to be. Now surprisingly, something that hasn't bothered me with this generation of VR headsets, which uh, did bother me with headsets from Virtuality back in the 90s, all the way up from DK1, DK2 and God knows what else we tried, um, is the comfort. And uh, I have to say, I'm mean, primarily using the Oculus Rift with driving simulators, I honestly don't find it uncomfortable. The only aspect of comfort that does come in is if you're doing, say, a 40 plus minute race and it's warm, in which case, do what I do and get a fan and have that fan blown at you. Strangely, this not only actually stops your face from getting warm and uh, stops your body from overheating, especially if you're doing a rather vigorous driving game or more active VR game, but it actually bizarrely as to the immersion if you've got a fan blown at you uh, especially from the open window side of a car in this case i'd have to put the fan in front of me it, it really does a, a weird trick to make it feel as if it's wind from inside the vr headset blowing at you or inside the game rather than it being wind from a fan in your sitting room blowing at you so the obvious question the question i get asked by people repeatedly is which vr headset should you buy if you're going to go out and get one today because you're that impulsive which one do you pick up? Now, for driving simulators and flight simulators, my opinion has swayed backwards and forwards over the release period. It's been a year and a bit now since the Vive and the Rift came out. Initially, I always went for the Vive because it had a wider field of view, brighter screen, and it, it still does. It is more immersive than the Rift. It offers better VR from a raw VR perspective. That said, when it comes specifically to driving and flight simulators, one thing that you really begin to appreciate with the Oculus Rift is the asynchronous space warp, which is inherent to the Oculus Rift drivers. Now, the Vive has asynchronous time warp, and both of them do interleaved reprojection and basically smooth the game out if it happens to drop below the 90 hertz. It's the ideal frame rate for everything to be running at in VR. But it's just the case that the Oculus drivers with Asynchronous Space Warp do it better and more seamlessly than what's currently available in OpenVR. Now, you can make a counter argument and say you should just have a faster computer and generally you also don't want to be using Asynchronous Space Warp, especially if you're being more competitive with driving simulators because it does affect the uh, perception of speed and things. But in reality, what you will notice is that the start of races or when there's a big crash or random things that only happen once or twice in a 30 minute session, um, they slow the game down, even if you set everything up optimally. And it's just nicer to have them slow the game down in a way that's less irritating. And that's what you tend to get with the Oculus Rift at this point in time. Now, I hope that Valve uh, and OpenVR do do something like Asynchronous Space Warp. As I said, they've got Asynchronous Time Warp. It just doesn't work as well. And I think they probably will do at some point in the future, but it's been a long time and they haven't yet. So it, that might not be a make or break issue for you. But what really has put me off the HTC Vive is not actually the headset itself or the uh, OpenVR side of it. I actually really do prefer OpenVR to the oculus home aside from the lack of basic with space warp um what's really put me off is dealing with htc support with some of the problems i had with my headset and i got my headset day one so i understood it's quite likely there's going to be random problems that companies iron out and i really wouldn't be surprised if newer htc vive headsets have been through three iterations now i think of the actual design and light there's soon to be another lighthouse but that probably won't be for the vibe but regardless I'm sure that the newer HTC Vive headsets probably have fewer issues uh, and probably won't have any problems. That said, that's having problems with it isn't the problem. The issue is the HTC customer support and their process and how much of a mess they make of things. For example, with my Vive, I had a problem where it would uh, turn off sporadically. And I got it sent off, but the headset they returned back had dead pixels on it. I just don't understand how that can happen and I just don't understand how when I tried to contact them again to get that fixed they they made a botch of it to the point where I still have some issues with my uh, HTC Vive headset um, what you do in HTC it just doesn't make any sense needless to say I'm really looking forward to when more companies jump onto the open VR standard use the amazing lighthouse technology but maybe have a better support structure 
or uh, service setup. So personally, I would go with the Oculus Rift at this point in time because if you do have problems, chances are you're not going to have as much of a pain in the arse as if you deal with the other company. I would also definitely recommend to buy your VR headset off a website like Amazon, for example. A, because I've got affiliate links and uh, I get money when you do that, so that's, that's really good for me not self-motivated at all but b the reason why i myself buy just about anything that's more expensive than 200 pounds off amazon rather than random websites is because their service and customer support is absolutely impeccable and uh, in my case i've had problems with with things that were a year old take it to your local post office and before amazon even received it they, they refund you i mean i couldn't ask for anything more now i can't guarantee that would happen to you if you had a problem with your vr headset but my history with Amazon has always been really good. You may have noticed I'm cheating a little bit in this race. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm testing out the grass physics. It's important every race to do it at least a couple of times. How else would you know how to handle your vehicle off-road? Uh, you've got to develop those skills. All said and done though, with the recent price drops of the VR headsets and the game support that's now there, not just on the simulation side, there's so many really good VR titles now. Onward, Pavlov, Echo Arena, high quality VR videos that are 3D of people that are not wearing enough clothing, stuff like that. There's plenty of reasons now that anyone will, will really enjoy virtual reality rather than it just being a sort of nerdy niche thing. It is definitely time to get yourself a VR headset, in my opinion. With any luck, that's destroyed your wallet as much as I've destroyed mine with virtual reality and uh, you, you can just blame me. It, it was my fault. Tell your partner that. I'm perfectly happy to be a uh, blame sponge, an international blame sponge. That's my role in life. Now, uh, if you've got any questions that I haven't covered in this video, ask them in the comment section. I will endeavour to answer everything as best possible. Um, don't forget to also subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. It lets, when I see lots of subscriptions on a video, I know it's what people want. And also like or dislike, as that also helps me know what people want. Now, uh, as I say, I do have Amazon affiliate links for people in the UK and the USA in the description. If you are getting one of these VR headsets and you want to help me out, please use them. It's a massive boost to uh, make me justify my stupid hobbies and i really really do appreciate it but until the next one guys let's get ready for this overtake and then uh, we'll end the video what a move that was uh okay got his place back forget that see you in the next video guys goodbye